Hi and welcome back to The Cottage. Today we're going to be talking about how the question, what is enough, follows us through the journey of a minimalist lifestyle. This little question, what is enough, it's actually a really big one. Whether subconsciously or consciously, we think about it all the time. Am I giving my kids enough love? Am I putting in enough effort at work? Do I have enough friends? And this time of year, with Christmas and the holiday season, it even morphs into, did I buy enough presents? Or did I put up enough Christmas lights? It's a worry question, one that has us feeling anxious and at times even a little bit afraid. But it does not have to be that way. I think we can reframe the way that we ask this question, and in fact, I feel like that reframing actually happens quite naturally as we journey through a minimalist lifestyle. I want to set up this video as a sort of timeline through what I believe are the five main stages of minimalism or seeking to live a more simple and intentional life. And it's important to note that this question, the what is enough question, does appear in each and every stage, but it's going to take on a different meaning depending on what stage a person is in. It's also important to note that minimalism is a journey and journeys don't come in straight lines. There's going to be times when people might slide back into a stage that they had previously gone through and there might be times somebody skips a stage altogether. That's all part of the process and completely normal and natural and there is no set destination for minimalism. This is a lifelong journey. This is something that you're going to be doing for a very long time. So let's get started with the first stage of minimalism and that is stage one. The people in this stage have likely heard of the word minimalism but they think about it as something trendy or maybe even a little bit weird. They think of the process of minimalism as being too restrictive and boring and maybe made for only those type of people that like to punish themselves or be really straight and narrow, very strict about everything. The people that are in stage one tend to play the comparison game quite a lot. They worry about making sure that they have the latest fashion, that they're keeping up with their friends, their coworkers, their neighbors, their family members, and trying to fit in with them. They ask the what is enough question by comparing themselves to other people. So they might have a friend who threw their son or daughter a birthday party that was completely over the top. It had all the great decorations, it had food catered in, everybody from the class was invited and it was just really, really spectacular event. And so they compare themselves then when they set out to do a birthday party for their own child wondering, Am I putting out enough decorations? Do I have enough food? Am I inviting enough people? It's all in retrospect to comparing to other people in their circle of influence. As it relates to day-to-day -day life, people in this stage are very concerned about making sure that they have all their bases covered. They want to make sure they have enough food stockpiled, toiletries, paper goods, things like that for a just-in-case situation. They want to make sure they have enough variety when it comes to clothing. They hold on to things because they want to make sure they have it just in case um, any set number of things might come up in their lives. They also tend to sign up for a lot of activities and volunteer opportunities because they don't want to be seen as a person who is slacking off and not giving enough effort. Generally speaking, people in phase number one are not concerned with having too much. They're worried about not having enough or missing out on something or being lacking in some way. Which brings us to stage number two. In this stage, the question turns to why don't I have enough? in three different ways. Firstly, they start to realize that their homes are feeling really cluttered, really crowded, there's no space in their drawers, there's not enough space in their garages. They're really feeling overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that they have to manage. They're also starting to realize that they've maybe taken off, bitten off more than they can chew in terms of activities. They're overrun, they're so tired at night, just feel very overworked and overwhelmed. And thirdly, for a lot of people in this stage, they start to realize that their bank accounts don't have enough money in them. The foolish spending and the overspending has really started to catch up and they now are struggling to meet their day-to-day -day basic financial needs because of some of the decisions that they made in phase number one. If you're watching this video and realizing that you are in stage two yourself, 
I would encourage you to sit in this frustrated feeling for a little while and really be introspective about it. It can be a scary time. I know that money struggles and the amount of clutter, those are things that really drew us to minimalism nearly seven years ago now, and it's really not a fun place to be in when you realize that you've made some mistakes in the past. But it's important to sit there and think about it and also make the decision. Do you want to stay in that life of turmoil or do you want to try to make your life better? Stage three is when most people start to investigate further this idea of minimalism and simplified living because of the frustration that they felt in stage number two. And it's when they start exploring more about it. And I would say probably the majority of people watching this channel or most channels of minimalism here on YouTube do so because they are wanting to learn more about the process. They're starting their decluttering journey, which can be pretty overwhelming doing by yourself, and so they want some accountability, they want some tips and ideas in that regard. And there can be a level of excitement and anticipation as you start to claw your way out of some of those mistakes that were made and look for a more simplified life. The question that gets asked in this stage is, what is enough to keep? People tend to have two different worries. They worry that they won't declutter enough, and they also worry that they're going to declutter too much. A little advice for those of you in this stage, many of the videos that I feature on my channel are about specific things that you can do during this phase, but the Cliff Notes version is that only you can determine what is the right amount, what is enough for your particular situation. A couple things to try. The first is to act like a curator. I had somebody contact me just this last week saying that they loved the idea of minimalism, but they tended to be a collector of things. And they were finding themselves buying things for their collection, even though they didn't necessarily love them, just because it fit in that collection. The advice that I gave her was to think like a curator and realize that you will not have space to bring home every single item that you find that can fit in that collection, and so you really need to focus on your favorites. Can you imagine if an art museum took in every single painting or sculpture that was presented to them? It would soon become overrun and nothing would shine, nothing would stand out, it would all just look like really kind of a bunch of garbage. And so to focus on, especially for collections, things that you love, your favorite pieces, so that you have maybe set aside a shelf or a curio cabinet that has your collection in it, and then every time you see something that could fit in your collection, you're going to judge that piece against the pieces that you are currently displaying. That will help you really curb your bringing in new items and really help you understand what is enough to you and realize that maybe you don't need that extra piece or maybe you do want that piece and it can replace something else. Another way to test this process out to determine what is the right amount is to use the container system. I did a whole video about this, but essentially the rule is you set yourself a container. You have a drawer or a bin or a shelf or a room that everything that you have in a specific category needs to fit in that container. And that will really help you to determine how much is enough. If you're finding that your container isn't big enough, you actually do need more space, get yourself a bigger container. But have that as your boundary and that will help you in this process of determining um, how much to keep and really how much to declutter. I love what the Minimal Mom has to say about this stage. If you feel like maybe you haven't decluttered enough and you could still go farther, that probably means that you can. The odds of you going overboard, decluttering too much, and then regretting it later are very, very slim. You're going to naturally know when to stop. The goal of this stage is to find a healthy balance of keeping the things that you love and you use and being able to maintain them, being able to find them, being able to care for them and use them properly. And you will know naturally when that is enough. Many people who enter stage four do so with the mindset that less is more. They've gone through this entire decluttering process. It's been a little bit draining. They're happy to be out of that process and they're starting to realize the peace that comes with it. They're beginning to realize that minimalism is so much more than just the stuff you decide to surround yourself with and starting to explore what is enough in regards to life balance. How much time do I spend at work with my family on hobbies or extracurricular activities? They're exploring this in the regards of what is enough. 
Stage four is a very empowering one. It is when a person starts to realize that it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no to gifts or hand-me-downs that might be coming into your life. It's okay to say no to a volunteer opportunity that doesn't align really with passions or values that you have. It's okay to say no because you are being very introspective and really thinking about what brings your life joy and purpose. People in this stage have a very good sense of peace and intentionality. The final stage, stage five, is when a person is living their life in balance. They have established what is the proper amount of belongings for them to care for and manage, and they also have the right level of commitments. And there is a piece that comes along with that. With all of those excess distractions of clutter and overcommitment eliminated from their lives, people in this stage tend to think a little bit deeper and might be asking themselves the question, am I enough? But thankfully, at this point in their minimalism journey, they are confidently able to answer that yes, I am enough. In a previous video, I made a statement that seemed to resonate with a lot of people, and so I want to share it again. You are complete in an empty room. And people who are in this stage five, they recognize, and more importantly, they believe that they have everything that they need to fulfill their life's purpose already inside of them. They recognize that any physical item that they acquire or any activity that they sign up for are really just tools and extensions of themselves to help them fulfill that purpose. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, just because you reach the fifth stage does not mean that your life is going to be free of mistakes or issues or worries. That is just not the case. That is not how life works. I personally am constantly finding myself sliding back different stages, even as far back as stage one at times when the grip of jealousy and comparison enters my life. This is just a natural part of life. But the good news though is that once you realize and believe that you are enough, it is so much easier to bring your life back in balance to a place of peace and contentment. And that is it. That is all five stages of the minimalism lifestyle journey. I know it's a lot of information to take in. Maybe you've never really thought about minimalism in this way at all, and it's brand new information. I'd be curious to know after watching this video, what level, what stage you feel that you are in on your journey. Leave me a comment down below so we can chat about that. Please know that I'm always here to support and encourage you no matter what stage that you are in. And I pray and hope that you'll be able to reach stage five and feel that peace and contentment in your life. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope that you'll stop by the cottage again really soon.